Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me for today's demonstration of Coolfront Mobile. My name is Derek, and I'm one of the support representatives at Coolfront Technologies. Coolfront is a great way for service contractors to increase revenue by using our flat rate pricing database to price service work. It'll also help you organize the office by being able to eliminate paperwork and move to a digital invoicing platform. We'll also let you increase efficiency out in the field with technicians because all of your technicians will be choosing pricing from one database of options. Let's take a look at the Coolfront mobile account. Now currently you're looking at an admin view as I would be the first person that registered for the account. And we'll start from there. On the left hand side, here's our home screen of options. One of the first things that you can do once the account is created is underneath the company info section. We have options to upload a company logo, fill out your company details, and down at the bottom, you have a space here for warranty, payment, and license information. This section here, anything that you enter will show up on each and every invoice call. So if you wanna have that consistent message show up, anything entered in these fields would display on the customer invoice. Next, you'll wanna set up your users. So there'll be one company account across the board, and then each employee of the company would have their own user login. And we do have three different types of users, depending on the amount of control you would want to have an employee for access to the account. Administrators have full access over the entire application. That would be making adjustments to pricing, creating discounts, things of this nature. And you can have as many admins for the account as you would need. Um, there's no limitations there. The office user has almost the same amount of control as an admin, but they can't update payments uh, to buy more work orders. They don't have the ability to remove administrators and they are unable to activate some of the additional add-on features, which we'll cover briefly at the end of this demonstration. And then there's the service professional. That's the most basic user level. And that would include options for the technicians and they would be assigned just the work orders and they would see the work orders that are assigned to themselves and themselves only. So they would not see work assigned to a different technician. On any one of our screens, the green plus button at the top allows you to create a brand new option. So in this case for users, you just simply select the type of person that you'd like to create, enter in their name, email, optional truck number if you use truck numbers for technicians, and then you can apply a color-coded option to help you stay organized between all of your users. Once that user has been created, then that user on their device can go to coolfront.com in order to log into the account. Now that brings me to my first section about the web application. Coolfront itself is a web-based application if it is not a native app, and you will not find it in any of the app stores on your mobile devices. So any device with a web browser, preferably Google Chrome for Android or Windows devices, or Safari browser on Apple's de devices. You would go to coolfront.com, and then in the upper right-hand corner, you'll either see login, or on the left-hand side, you'll see there will be a menu option if it's on a smaller screen. But you're going to be choosing Login and selecting Coolfront Mobile, and it will bring you to a login page asking to provide the email address and associated password with the new user that's been created. One of the next things that you can verify is during the signup process, it will ask you for some of these information about hourly rates, markup, creating tax profiles. At any time after the signup, you can immediately make changes to the items that were entered during the signup process. So I can check for my hourly rates. You can create as many different labor rates as you would need to in the system. We do recommend a standard and an after hours. Agreeing the the, the uh, green plus button here is to create something brand new. 
You can choose from a canned option or use a custom name and then just type in the dollar amount. Let's take a look for my HVC standard rate. It's currently set for 130 per hour. I can come into the system at any time, increase or decrease. If I set it to 125 per hour and then select save, the next time I use my HVC standard rate, I'll be set for 125 per hour. Part markup profile. What this is saying is um, any item that cool front sources at a dollar or less, you're gonna be marking it up. These are the default values by five times if it's a dollar or less. Any part in the system that cool front sources at $200 or more is gonna be marked up by 1.75 times. Now the majority of service parts are gonna be between a dollar and $200. In between a dollar and 200, there's an algorithm which will automatically calculate the markup value for you. What that means is that, is that the less expensive parts are gonna be marked up at a more aggressive rate. And as the part gets more expensive, it will decrease in markup value. Increasing or decreasing the part markup or your hourly rate will increase or decrease the prices that the application provides. Feel free to contact us at any time with assistance and making sure that your numbers are appropriate for your business. Underneath tax profiles, you can create as many different tax jurisdictions as you would need to. You can charge a percentage based off of labor or percentage on part sale or part cost. You can set up a service call fee. So with flat rate pricing, we recommend quoting over the phone your service call fee only. You can uh, call it a service call fee, a diagnostic fee, whatever you'd like, enter a dollar amount. My service call fee is currently set for $65 and you can create as many different service call fees as you would need to. So with flat rate, if you're just moving to flat rate for the first time, typical conversation with a customer calling in, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, we charge a service call fee of $65. That's to cover the cost of getting the technician to your location. At that time, he will diagnose the issue with your system and give you an exact flat rate price that you can count on paying upfront before the service work is completed. Maintenance agreement plans, if you have uh, agreement contracts and offer customers discounts, then those can be added into the system as well. I'll just show real briefly, I have a comfort club program. I'm offering a 15% discount off of total price, but you do have options for labor or parts only. And then you can actually sell the maintenance agreement plans on the work orders um, on an annual basis, biannual, quarterly, or monthly basis. So if it's created in the system here by an administrator or office user, the technician out in the field can apply the maintenance agreement plans. Discounts would be for temporary promotions like friends and family, senior citizen, military discounts, anything that you'd like to have created. You can discount on a percentage or you can have a discount based off of a dollar amount. The last three sections here for installations and quotes, tune-ups and repairs and equipment are for your custom items. Coolfront sources the service parts. It does not source equipment costs, but you would have the ability to enter in your own equipment details. For example, here is an air conditioner system that I created. You would provide your own descriptions, your own details and enter in your own dollar amount. Again, if this is created by an administrator, this particular installation can be applied by a, a technician out in the field. Tune-ups is similar to the agreement program. If you just wanted to uh, create a custom tune-up for clean and checks, for those of your customers that don't have an actual contract, those can be created and applied underneath the tune-up section. And then repairs and equipment, this would be available for you in order to create your own custom item. So if there's something that Coolfront um, doesn't provide that you're looking for, or if you just wanted to create your own custom item, anything entered here, again, can be selectable by the technician on each and every service call. So let's get into creating a work order. So the phone call comes in and I'm on an office computer 
and I'm the dispatcher. So I speak to the customer and we click on create a work order. If you're connected to QuickBooks, you would have the ability to search your existing QuickBooks database of customers. If you're not connected to QuickBooks, that's fine too. You can immediately start entering in customer information. We do also have the ability to upload your customers via spreadsheet. Just let us know and we can send you a template for the customer import capability. So if it's Mr. Partridge that's calling back in, we've serviced him before. We can search for the customer information. I can select the customer name from the drop down option, and it will autofill the rest of the contact information. Either this information would be coming from the QuickBooks file, or if this was a return customer, this was the information that was filled out originally. Down at the bottom of this screen, as the person creating or dispatching the call, if I'm speaking to Mr. Partridge over the phone right now, I can quickly reference the most recent five visits at this customer's location. This is just gonna give me the quick highlights about which technician was assigned at that time, a dollar amount, the issue or the reason for the phone call, any repairs and quick notes. These icons on the right-hand side, if I needed to, I could go directly into those older service work history to see additional details. The top location, you have the ability to enter in the issue or the reason for the phone call. So if it's a no heat call, you would schedule a day and time. So I can leave it for today and I'll schedule it for this afternoon. We'll put it at three o'clock. You would assign it to a technician, so you'd be able to select from the different types of users that are available. Coolfront provides an auto-generated work order number. You don't have to use this work order number if you don't choose to. You can delete this out and enter in your own numbers. I'll apply the service call fee, which I had set for $65, and then the hourly rate You'd have the selectable options as well. I'll use my HVC standard rate, which I updated to 125 per hour. Choose any applicable tax profiles if necessary. And then if the customer has a maintenance agreement plan, once you've entered it, those would be selectable as well to associate any discounts that are due to the customer. From the dispatching screen, you do have the ability to apply tune-ups, discounts, and installations. It's rare that a dispatcher would do those things, but um, if they needed to, they would have the option to do so. And then also there's a notes field here with a person dispatching the phone call. Maybe it's the uh, customer uh, wants you to use the side door. So this note will show up to my technician when he looks at the work order but it's not gonna display on the invoice when it sends to the customer. As the dispatcher, I click on save, and now I've created a new work order here, three o'clock for Mr. Dale Partridge. Now the technician, when he's out in the field, my technician, Alan, in this case, he'll log into Coolfront on his device, and ideally this would be a smartphone or a tablet or I should say, ideally, it would be a tablet for the larger screen size, but you can access uh, Coolfront via the smartphones as well. And again, you'd open your Coolfront uh, browser or open up the web browser and go to coolfront.com in order to log into the account. So Alan, on his mobile device, clicks on work orders. And if he's taking a look at work orders for this week, let me go back here just to make sure that I've got that registered correctly. Might just have to hit the refresh page. Here it is. Yep, it showed up just a second. So here's that brand new work order that we created. So the technician knows that uh, today at three o'clock in the afternoon, we've got a service call at Mr. Partridge's location. You'll notice that the service call fee is already applied, the customer details, the issue of the reason for the phone call, and then also that same glance back history that was available for the office staff 
would be available for the technician at the bottom as well for the most recent five visits. Now the glance back will show you no matter which technician was on that call as well, just for the quick referencing. Here's the internal note about using the side door when we show up. So we show up to the location and then we can start diagnosing the issue or the reason for this no heat call. So while the technician is diagnosing, they can also enter in their own notes, maybe internal facing notes if they wanted to add things like make, model, serial, and filter size. And then customer facing notes. So maybe, you know, found this, recommend that. So as they're um, taking a look, and this is not limited to character count. So we do have a lot of technicians that like to write very detailed notes. You can get as specific as you would like to on the customer facing notes. So now that the uh, technician has diagnosed the issue, they can apply the recommended repairs. And before we go into the repair database, I'll just point out that the space for installations, tune-ups, and the sale of maintenance agreement plans can be selected as well from this screen. Majority of the time, you're gonna be going to the repair database for service calls. So let's take a look and see what that's gonna look like. So from this home screen, you can either start with an exact manufacturer part number if you have one. If we have a repair that contains that manufacturer part number, you'll see results. If a technician does not have the manufacturer part number, you can also search for a basic term, like for in this, this case, if it was a blower motor. We do recommend primarily searching by the manufacturer part number if you have it. And then if not, start with a basic term first. It's gonna show you a bunch of results. And then on the right hand side, use the refinements to narrow down your search options. So if I know that it's a direct drive blower motor, I know that it's three quarter horsepower. I happen to know if it's train American standard. Now I've got nine results of motors to take a look through. So you, you can see where you can continue to narrow down results to help the technician select from appropriate repairs. On the upper right hand corner, these three dots at the search location, you can filter by trade. So if there's a specific trade that you need to be searching for repairs only, that can be helpful for you. And then also if you wanted to have the technician to be able to see the uh, repair time, the technician can choose the show repair time option and it will display the repair time on the uh, repair before you select the option. But you'll also see when you click on the actual repair itself, it will give you that sourced labor time as well. So this particular uh, motor has the motor itself and also a run capacitor inside. And then they can add this to a work order. Before I add this to a work order, I do wanna point out that in the upper right hand corner, you have the ability to mark company favorites which would show up to all technicians across the entire account, or if it's just for this individual user, you can indicate your own individual favorites. I'll apply this particular repair to the work order and it's calculated the flat rate price. So it took the cost of the motor and the run capacitor times my markup profile, and then it also applied the hour and 41 minute labor time multiplied by my $125 per hour rate, and that's what's calculating the flat rate price for us. I'm gonna also just choose an additional repair because I wanna show you, this is the section here where you'd find your favorites or company favorites. And let's say it was adding a surface igniter. So I can add that as well. So now I have recommended repairs on the work order. And now as the technician, I'm gonna hand over the device and get customer approval. So we have our homeowner, Mr. Partridge. We'll always lock the device just to make sure that the homeowner doesn't hit the back button and make changes to their work order or see someone else's work. 
And then you'll see the details here about the recommended repairs. So it'll give the customer an option to approve or decline a recommended repair. And if a customer does happen to decline a repair, so here's the notes at the bottom about found, you know, what we found on the call while we were diagnosing. And if a customer happens to decline a repair, your company will have record of declined information as well. It will leave it as a strike through with a declined message. So now you've got history of customers if they um, decline your recommended repairs. So the customer has approved the motor repair and we'll get the signature. And then unlock the device. If the customer is not on site, you do have the ability to use the email button here. It will copy in the customer's address by default and include my company uh, as well. If you needed to, you can enter in comma separated values and you can enter in another email. Unlock the device. And now the technicians got approved work and now your homeowner can have the peace of mind knowing that they can count on spending $627.35 no matter which technician showed up at your uh, at the homeowner's location so that you'll have that consistency across all um, technicians, whether it's a different technician or if it's the same technician doing the same exact type of repair for a different customer, you know, the next day, you'll be quoting the same dollar amounts. So now the technician can indicate a job as a started job or when they complete the job, they can mark it as completed. And if they collect, they can actually indicate the job as paid as well. So let's say for instance, if we um, completed this job, but we do need to invoice the customer, we can leave it as a completed job status. You'll see over here, the format of the work orders themselves, it grays out the, the ticket and it puts a navy blue bar on the left-hand side. Now when the technician's out in the field, regardless if it's a started job or a paid job where it has a black bar on the left-hand side, at the back office, and I'll leave this as completed, on their screen, when they refresh their page, they're gonna see updated information here. So these work orders, as an office or administrator, I'm seeing all employees, regardless of who's assigned to which job. And then the technician view will have just their own assigned work. So the technician can then send the email um, once the job has been completed. I just wanna show you a print preview. So if the customer is either printing off at their home computer, or if you print it off in the back office, this is what gets sent to the customer. Now this would read as an invoice because I indicated this as a completed job. If I marked it as paid, this would read as a receipt. And if I left it in the new or started status, it would read as a work order. So now the technician's job is done and he can go ahead and proceed to the next service call. That's gonna cover the majority of what I wanted to talk about. I am going to briefly touch up upon our additional add-on features which are capable. We have an integration with Dropbox, which are free accounts. It's a cloud-based third-party storage system that you can connect to to attach images or files to the work order. Those images and files will stay on this exact job instance uh, for today's date. They do not get sent to the customer um, via the email button. We also have an option for part cart, which allows the technician to request the parts that were used on the system. Uh, so for instance, the motor and the run capacitor that was used, or they can choose their own description and their own quantity and amount. Once the technician selects save, then an administrator or office person would have to approve or decline their requests to add additional um, parts to a, a shopping cart. 
So let's take a look at the home screen underneath the add-ons page. Here's the ability to connect to QuickBooks. Here's the account for connecting your Dropbox account. Merge it is for customers that don't use QuickBooks. It would be to combine two like accounts into one account. But if you're using QuickBooks, those capabilities would be done through QuickBooks. Google Calendar would allow you to automatically place any appointment onto the a Google Calendar account. All you would need is a primary Gmail account. And as soon as it's created inside of Coolfront, those appointments would start automatically signing up or showing up on the Google Calendar. eTouch is a third party service provider and they do satisfaction surveys. So after a technician leaves a service call, it asks your customer to uh, provide a or fill out a survey the very next day after this work has been complete. And positive four and five star reviews, that system follows up a second time to ask the customer to post positive reviews to Yelp or to Google to help with online. Uh, reviews. And then part cart was the option with a technician requesting parts. This is where an administrator or office person would approve or decline those items in order to build the master shopping list. If you have any additional questions, feel free to give us a phone call. We'd be happy to go into further details about these add-on features and connecting them to your account. The last thing that I'll talk about today is going to be the pricing structure for the program. So when you sign up for a trial of Coolfront Mobile, we give you 50 trial work orders. Underneath the account balance, you'll see how many work orders are remaining. My example account here has 91 work orders left. Once your balance goes down to zero, you would either turn the auto pay feature on so that if my balance hits zero, it would buy more work orders for me, or you would manually need to select the buy more work orders option in order to make a purchase. So Coolfront does not charge any monthly fees. There are no annual fees. We do not charge per user and you can put Coolfront on as many devices as you would need to. We do charge $1.79 per work order credit and the minimum purchase at a time would be 50 at a time. So you can see 89.50 would be purchased up front the analogy that I like to give is if you think about it like going to the post office to buy stamps, you're not restricted to a time frame, so you take as long as you need to to go through your balance and you make that pre-purchase up front. So in addition to the $1.79 uh, work order fees, when Coolfront calculates the flat rate prices, so back to our example for, Mer for Mr. Partridge, when Coolfront calculated the motor repair and it came out to 562.35, Coolfront added an additional $1.79 into that price. It's built right in so that when you collect on approved work, we're helping you recover those work order fees that it costs to use the system. And again, if you have any additional questions about the process of creating the work order or the pricing structure, feel free to give us a phone call at any time. We'll be happy to help you out. And I'll leave you with this support information. Here's our phone number, email, or chat with us on our website. That was it for what we wanted to cover today. I appreciate your time and have a wonderful day.